that's uh, potentially going to win me about 600 bucks. Well, welcome to day two. It's uh, Monday, and uh, we started our day off real hot. Caught one really nice fish. There's a big old crappie. There were two of them down there. I'm thinking oh, this might be my two pounder. Holy smokes, get in here, dude. Oh my goodness. Oh, oh boy, didn't have this camera rolling. That potentially is my two pounder right there. Day number two, well, technically day number three, but Monday on Watts Bar Lake, I think this is my two, it's, good. it's gonna be close. Pound and three quarter maybe. But that's, uh, that's going to win some money in the tournament. And there's three fish like this down there. Finally got this guy to bite. Midday. Let's see what we got here. Oh! One pound. Let's see if we can get this. One pound, 13 ounces. Oh, three ounces shy of a... Yep. Three ounces shy of a two-pounder. It's a pound and three-quarter fish right there. Yes! Got him on uh, ACC. Crop six jig, this is a one eighth ounce jig. And that Thor's hammer, I've been using it the past two days. This Thor's hammer by Pete's Tackle. That's that, that's the color that other big one hit on. Monster, monster fish. I'm gonna get this big girl back, right where I found her. See you big girl. See you come tournament time. Yes, all right, we got another spot. There, are, there were three fish just like it. I'm gonna leave them alone because I got a waypoint marked on it. Um, we're gonna go run to a different spot here. Finding those big ones, pounding three quarter fish, getting real close to those two pounders. Today was just a another mission of kind of finding little spots. I'm, I'm in a little, this is like a little cut going back in here. And right on this point, 15 to 20 feet of water seems to be the depth, which is very strange. Water temps are in the upper 50s, if not, a little 60s, let's see what we got here, yeah. 57 degree water temps, which you'd think, they, if, if I was up north, I'd be thinking these fish are way shallow, spawning, doing their thing. Uh, but a lot of times these fish are probably, they can spawn in deep water. I think they might be spawning in 15 to 20 feet on little pieces of brush. It takes a lot of time to just look at side imaging and pick out these little pieces of brush. They're not very big, but they do hold some big fish. So let's uh, run to another spot here and see if we can catch a two pounder. So pound and three quarter fish, uh, probably gonna win me some money in the tournament. I'm, I'm gonna guess that, you know, pound and three quarter on this lake, I don't think there's gonna be a whole lot of two pounders caught. So pound and three quarter is gonna possibly win me some gas money, which is good. Most of these fish I'm finding are in 15 to 20 feet of water. So all I'm doing is I'm idling around I showed you guys yesterday how to highlight certain areas. Let's zoom out a little bit here. So I have the green highlighted area. That's about 15 to 25 feet of water highlighted. And I'm just going around. They're on pieces of very small brush. Let's see if I can find any back here. I think I went over some. Cool thing about modern electronics, you can scroll back. Is that as far as I can scroll back? Dang. Oh, there's some, that, I don't know if you, that might be hard to see. There's a shadow right below the zero. I'm trying to get you guys in focus here. There's a small little line. That's hard, too hard to see on the camera. But there's small pieces of brush everywhere. These big ones, there's only like two or three of them on, the, on these pieces of brush. There's not very many. So when you drop down, you gotta be real careful not to scare them off because there's not, it's not like it's loaded with, with fish. Um, but yeah, I'm just trolling around, trying to find these brush piles, hoping to run into a two pounder here. Oh, 
Come on, dude, smack it. It's right on it. There he is. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's a monster. <laughs> These are monster crappie. It's a that's a giant black crappie. Holy smokes. Oh wow. Super light bite too, bow flipping them. These are absolute tanks. Just sitting by himself, absolute monster of a black crappie. Holy smokes. I'm gonna go through how I'm kind of piecing apart this little cove that I'm in and where I'm looking for, for these specific brush piles. Let's weigh this guy real quick. What are you weighing? All right, lock in, bud. One pound, 10 ounces. Unreal. <laughs> pound and three quarter fish. I haven't caught a ton of fish today. Pound and three quarter, one pound, 12 ounces, or one pound, 11, and then this is a one pound, 10, which could potentially win some money. Unbelievable, awesome fish. All right, well, there we go. One pound, 10 ounces. We're gonna let him go, or her go, probably. It's a big old, big old black crappie. Get going, buddy. There you go. See you, bud. All right, let's let's uh, let's walk through on a mapping system what I'm doing and kind of how I'm piecing apart or breaking apart these little coves because they're the, the brush is on very specific little drop off sections. So let me show you that on a map right here. Now, I've talked about the shading already um, in previous videos, but let's just run through that again. If you go to your charts and this can work on Humminbird or Navionics systems with Garmin, Lowrance, whatever you're using. You go to Menu, um, and you go to your Layers, and you go Water, and Depth Shading. Go to this drop-down. Now I have it between uh, 0 to 5 feet, so I don't hit any sandbars. And then 15 to 18, or 15 to 18 to 28 feet. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go make this 15 because this is where I'm gonna update this now and pretty much anything deeper than like 24 feet is hasn't been any good so i'm i'm tightening up that range of uh of depth that these fish are at so if i go back to my map here it's only going to highlight that range of depth in green and i'm finding a lot of them i got these waypoints here a lot of them are on these points, these sharper drop-offs, uh, a lot of these little pieces of brush piles. So I saw it with side imaging, came through here, and then they're really tight together. Um, I don't know if people dropped them or they're just old stumps, and because this is a river system, so it could have got pushed here through when uh, this thing floods in the springtime or goes back up in the summertime, summer pool, whatever. Um, so there could just be pieces of timber that have floated through here. but. I found it there and notice the pattern. So right here on the point, that's where I just caught that black crappie, one pound, 10 ounces. I caught that white crappie right here. Basically the same style of point on this, uh, be kind of an outside swing of the point right here. Right there's where I found a bunch of brush piles, caught that one pound, 12 ounce white crappie. So now that I've got a pattern established, I'm gonna keep looking for these little points. These are all secondary points where there's some piece of brush sticking out. So, and it seems to be on the outside turn. So as I keep going back in here, I think I might be done with this. I don't think there's any deep swing through there. But these two points, that's where it's been at. Um, I might try these two points right here. I'm gonna idle through this area and see how this has kind of a tighter edge right here. It gets into deep water pretty quick. See if we can find some brush on that one. Or idle up kind of into, oops, did I miss it? So that point and this point right here. That one and this other one up here. I'm gonna to try to idle around this outside edge of this point, see if I can find brush. Uh, that's basically what I'm doing. I'm trying to narrow down where these fish are gonna be. Um, and I think I've, I've found a pattern. That's the most important thing of when you're trying to find fish on a new lake, if you can make something 
if you can kind of piece something together where fish are consistently stacking up on a certain break line, a certain type of area. In this case, it seems like an outside swing of a point. There's also brush there that they're holding really close to. Uh, every single fish that I've caught, except for maybe one uh, on the two and a half days that I've been here, have been holding real tight to timber or some piece of brush. Brush, I shouldn't say timber, because this isn't like Lake Fork where you got um, flooded trees or anything. This is brush. You got some small stumps that maybe are four or five feet off the bottom. They come up four or five feet, but that's it. There's no like standing trees. At least I haven't found any yet. Um, so that's the game plan. Keep looking at these outside edges of these points and uh, find a bunch more spots where there's big fish. Yep. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I think I just found the uh, the winning pile of fish. Oh my goodness. I think I just found a massive school of two pounders. Come here. Oh. Just. I think I just found the winning school of fish. I was messing around updating my, my Garmin units on my phone and I just happened to look down at the live scope and there was a huge brush pile and all the fish are like this. They're, they're giants. Let's see what we got. One pound, one pound nine. So this is a pound and a half or still. <laughs> that is an awesome, awesome fish. The bigger ones are actually suspended way above it and this guy shot right out of the bottom of the brush pile. Keep him smacked it. I'm in, I'm in like 20 feet of water right now. Give this guy a drink real quick. But uh, we're gonna let this guy go because uh, I don't want to disturb the schools too much. Got the waypoint marked. I think we're gonna get some money on Saturday. Gotta pay for that gas. All right, well that's gonna wrap up the day. I think we got a good game plan going into the tournament. I got four or five spots that have pretty good sized fish on them. So, feel pretty good about it. It'd be really nice to win some gas money. I think it costs like 1200 bucks, or it's gonna cost like 1200 just to drive out here and back plus boat gas, so yeah, it'd be nice to win some, some gas money. But appreciate you watching as always. If you got any comments or questions, you can post them in the comment section below, or feel free, you can message me on their Facebook or Instagram, uh, anything you want. Rod and reel setup, sonar setup, stuff like that. I just got another message on Facebook. Guy just bought a pontoon, wondered what kind of fish finder you could put on it. Something simple, I told him the Helix 5, because. The Humminbird Helix 5, for the most part, in that $500 or less, is probably the winner. Them or Lowrance, but anyway, uh, feel free to message me any questions. Sonar, rod and reel setups, whatever you want. Appreciate you watching as always. I'm going to get out of here, fry up these fish, and uh, try to get a video edited. So, we'll see ya.